Hi, this is Kate from Minute Earth. When you get an infection, your body will often get to work generating extra heat, which we know as a fever, to help you fight the pathogen, which seems logical. After all, we also heat raw food, questionable water, and used surgical equipment to literally sizzle pathogens to death. But that's not how a fever works. I mean, even the puniest strategies for killing germs with heat require temperatures of around 65 degrees Celsius, yet most fevers top out at 40 degrees or so. Any temperature that's hot enough to decimate an invasion of viruses or bacteria would also decimate your own cells. A few extra degrees can slow down the replication of certain pathogens, but the bigger effect of a fever is how it benefits our own bodies. When your body temperature rises, neutrophils, white blood cells that lurk in your bone marrow, wake up and start gobbling germs. And other germ gobblers get better at identifying and engulfing pathogens when your temp is higher. Then there are T cells, which travel to lymph nodes to identify the pathogen, but they have to get there quickly before the germ overwhelms your body. When your body heats up, T cells get there way faster and can coordinate an effective response in time. But why does heat, and not even all that much heat, have all these effects? The answer, paradoxically, may have to do with the dangers of too much heat. If you are, say, jogging in the summer and you start to overheat, delicate components inside you can start breaking down. So as your temperature rises, your body jumps into action to protect itself. For instance, cells churn out tons of heat shock proteins, which find molecules that are unraveling and bind to them, either to stabilize or re-ravel them. When you get an infection, a fever may work, at least in part, by actively increasing your body temperature in order to trigger the same kind of protective process. Your body churns out those same heat shock proteins, which are so good at finding and binding to all sorts of molecules. They bind to molecules on the surface of T cells, creating sticky complexes that help the cells grab onto blood vessel walls and make the trek to the lymph nodes, where they ID the invader and coordinate a response. Heat shock proteins can also recognize and bind to specific bits of pathogens, sometimes to the heat shock proteins the pathogens themselves have churned out, then transport them to waiting germ gobblers. Our ancestors first co-opted these existing protective mechanisms to help fend off infections as long as 600 million years ago, and animals have been turning up the heat on pathogens ever since. Even critters that can't regulate their body temperature internally will bask, buoy, or buzz until they're toasty and infection-free. And no matter what species you are, the strategy works. Infected individuals that boost their temps recover more quickly and more often than those that don't. So the next time you get a fever, make sure you give it a warm welcome.